uh, uh, I know the name of my father and my mother. This is ordinary knowledge. Even a small child can possess everyday, uh, everyday or ordinary knowledge. Ordinary also, ordinary, okay? Ordinary, yes? It's normal, um, common knowledge uh, or common sense. So this is uh, a, a lot of synonyms. But scientific knowledge is, um, I can say, non-trivial. Uh, do you understand non-trivial? What I is non? Oh, I'm sorry. Non-trivial. I'm sorry. Non-trivial. Trivial. Non-trivial. Non and uh, when we analyze the etymology of this non-trivial knowledge, we um, sort of go uh, into history, into past, and. Uh, um, uh, to the history of European universities, where there were so-called seven liberal arts, seven liberal arts. And uh, uh, they were divided into three and four, into two groups, three arts and four arts. And the three arts were called trivium. In Latin, it's uh, um, three ways, uh, three ways. It's, uh, so three subjects, three subjects or three ways, and uh, these were these were gramma grammar uh, or grammatics, grammar, um, rhetor rhetorics, uh, rhetoric, uh, rhetorics, and uh, logic. Uh, excuse me, hello. Um, sorry to interrupt. Actually, you are just uh, typing into the private chat box. You need to. Uh, ah, I'm seeing. Yeah, so I, that's I why see. people are not uh, able to see it. I, I'm copying. I am copied it. Yes, please uh, yeah. do it because uh, uh, it is always uh, because I, I'm absent minded a little bit. So I'm always uh, uh, um, making the same mistake. Okay. okay. So. Uh, so I, I now I will. Yeah, uh, that's why the so, people are um, not getting to see that. Yes. Okay. So uh, if we see this uh, ordinary knowledge and scientific knowledge, we can say it's non-trivial, non-trivial knowledge, and uh, non-trivial no knowledge um, leads us to this trivium, which is uh, three ways in Latin and. Uh, uh, in, in, in the medieval universities, the trivium comprised grammar, rhetorics, and logic. So this were, uh, the, and from this comes uh, this word trivial, uh, also in Russian, we say trivialny, which uh, I think it's uh, in every language, maybe in Hindi also, but I'm not sure. Uh, trivial. It's English, yes? Trivial. Uh, you understand? So uh, three ways, and there were also four ways, which is called quadrivium. Quadrivium. Uh, quadrivium is a four ways. So uh, four ways. There were arithmetic. Arithmetic. Now I'm writing to all arithmetic. Um, geometry. Mm. Metry. Uh, astronomy and music. Astro no. Oh. Astronomy and music. Music. Ah, as as tro no no me and music. Uh, so this is quadrivium. Uh, so all in all, there are seven. And when you finished all these seven liberal arts, you got a degree Master of Arts. Master of Arts. It still exists somehow. Um, so in the abbreviation MA, well, like PhD or MA, have you seen this abbreviation MA, Master of Arts? 
Well, for example, if you open the book of Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, on the front page you will see by Charles Darwin, M.A., Master of Arts, okay? So uh, Charles Darwin was not doctor. He, he wasn't PhD. He received only Master of Arts. Uh, I, I'm not sure, maybe from Cambridge University or somewhere else. But uh, so he only finished the university. He didn't defend his doctor's thesis, Charles Darwin. But uh, Charles Darwin, okay. Maybe I'm pronouncing him not correctly. Charles Darwin, okay. Uh, is there anybody from Australia? Because in Australia, there is a city called Darwin on the north coast of Australia, Darwin. A city in Australia. Have you do you know Australia, the geography of Australia? Oh, yeah. I think Lil oh, yeah, is sort of um, uh, confirming it. Yes, you are from Australia. No, no, I'm from Indonesia, but it's in Indonesia. But you you are yeah, neighbors close to Australia. You know that uh, Darwin is facing uh, Indonesia. You see yeah. the city of Darwin. Okay. So now we have uh, Charles Darwin was MA, Master of Arts. So he was not a professor, he was not a doctor, he was just a master. Well, well, all of you are already masters, yes? Because you are postgraduates, so it's understood that you have master degrees. In physics now, you can say, but in, um, in the Middle Ages, this was just master degree. And that's from this, um, uh, master degree comes this trivium, trivium that was the indispensable for you to study. But uh, now we say that uh, the one feature of scientific knowledge is that it is not non-trivial. Uh, well, for example, the 32nd theorem of Euclides, um, of Euclid. Uh, what is that? The uh, 32nd theorem of Euclid. It's that uh, the sum of the angles of the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, degrees, I don't know how to write in chat. I will write just degrees. Okay. So the sum of the angles in the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. D'accord, Relon. Oh no, you are okay. It's Euclid. This is the theorem of Euclid. So it is not non-trivial because you you must prove it. It's not self-evident. Okay, it's not. Uh, you have to somehow um, argue that it is so, and this argument is already a feature of scientific knowledge when there is argument. When there is a, like a series of uh, syllogisms that lead you to some uh, maybe non-trivial outcome or non-trivial uh, sort of conclusion, that that is uh, um, science. Okay, so Euclid made science. Uh, geometry of Euclid was uh, a certain kind of science because it. Uh, uh, demanded attention, it demanded concentration, it demanded uh, uh, good logical skills in order to master it. Then we can say uh, non-trivial is uh, the assertion of the sphericity of the earth. Sphericity of the earth. Sphericity. What's wrong with it? Uh, I will ask you, maybe there's the, the, the editor in chat um, doesn't like how I wrote sphericity uh, of the earth. <laughs> earth. Uh, see, uh, uh, please see uh, how did I write it, sphericity. Have you anything against it, sphericity? You understand sphericity? Yeah, this is kind of a sphere, uh, 360 degrees. Yes, uh, is a f the, the Earth it has the form of a sphere. 
that's why I call it sphericity. But maybe yeah, it's uh, this is the shape, the shape of a the shape. Sphere. Yes, a spherical shape. Okay, I think the the ideal will be spherical shape of the Earth. Uh, then it is it will be all correct. Uh, this is non-trivial because uh, many ancient civilization, uh, including even Indian civilization, held that the earth is not spherical, okay? Uh, it's an awkward silence. So remember your own myths about the earth. Uh, for, for example, the Chinese called their land, um, the land which is under the heaven. So it was called, the, the uh, empire of China was called the middle empire because it was in the middle of the flat earth. And all other, uh, say, Mongols or Japanese, they were, some, or Koreans, they were somewhere on the borders. And uh, China was uh, in the center of the flat earth. So sphericity of the well, maybe it's not so. Just um, try to. There's a, a entrance felicity of the Earth. See in uh, encyclopedia. You can look it through and see whether I'm right or not. But I studied it very attentively. This subject, and I know that, uh, for example, this is. Uh, is there somebody from Latin America? Do you know what is Inca? Inca. Yes, I know. So. The Incas uh, showed even somewhere in the um, in the mountains. Uh, they showed the like uh, um, central point of this of the flat Earth. So somewhere is the center of the flat Earth. So Incas they thought that the Earth is uh, flat. Okay, Incas, according to their uh, imagination. Well, so uh, how was this non-trivial assertion of the spherical shape of the Earth? So how did it appear? At first it appeared with Pythagoras, um, because Pythagoras believed that uh, the, the numbers ruled the world. Pythe Pythagoras. And uh, the spherical shape is the ideal shape. So uh, all the heavenly bodies are spherical. Earth, he considered to be one of the heavenly bodies. And according to Pythagoreans, 10 uh, bodies, uh, heavenly bodies, um, rotate around the central fire. This is a Pythagorean model. Uh, you know, it is interesting that in the 17th century, Galileo was accused of a Pythagorean heresy, this uh, heliocentrism. It was called Pythagorean, uh, that the earth moves, uh, Pythagorean um, heresy, Pythagorean heresy. You just can dial, uh, just uh, Google it and you will see that such term does exist, Pythagorean heresy, or maybe heresy some, well, I think it's uh, more or less uh, correct. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, heresy is written heresy uh, through, in such way from, because this let, uh, word is borrowed from, the let, from Latin and then from the Greek. But I think now um, it's written uh, like heresy, like I have written it. So, Pythagoreans uh, were, uh, when they taught that the earth is uh, uh, um, spherical and that it moves, it was considered to be a very, very non-trivial and maybe eccentric assertion. You understand? Eccentric. 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 So uh, science borders on the eccentric. So scientists are themselves somehow eccentric persons. When Archimedes was, uh, uh, you know, before he was killed, um, he was uh, just uh, um, painting some uh, spheres 
on the earth. And when the, war, the Roman warrior came to him and um, wanted to kill him, Archimedes didn't, didn't think about his own life, but he said, noli tangulet circulus meus, in Latin, which means uh, don't touch my circles. So he was eccentric, I'll say, Archimedes. Um, and he was also, uh, he create, uh, he found a very uh, non-trivial law, the law of Archimedes, okay? So uh, this uh, is uh, how we can um, uh, just noli tangere circulus meus, don't touch my circles. So he was a little bit eccentric. Also, maybe you know that he cried Eureka uh, and uh, just was running uh, naked uh, through the streets of uh, Syracuse, Syracuse. Why? Because he understood Maybe Eureka, now it is written is like that, Eureka, okay? So it is just a, a form of a Greek wor verb, Evrisko, which is to find. So Eureka means from Greek, I have found, I have found. So with this a cry, he uh, ran uh, naked through the streets of the ancient uh, Sicilian city. I think it was, were, they were Syracuse, but maybe other city. So he was eccentric and uh, eccentric, non-trivial and systematic also because uh, uh, Euclid is a system. So uh, systematic, non-trivial and eccentric. These are the features of uh, mm, scientific knowledge as uh, against the everyday knowledge or against ordinary knowledge. So ordinary knowledge is not eccentric, it is common sense knowledge. It is not uh, systematic, it's a chance knowledge. So everybody knows uh, something. Uh, with, with the, the knowledge of, every, uh, of ordinary man doesn't form a system. He knows many things from many different fields. Now, for example, how to drive a car or how to enter Zoom. But um, he does, we can say that he knows um, all the um, uh, skills to build a car or to build a computer, okay? So he's a user, uh, user, but not the uh, user, but not the um, engineer. You understand? This, uh, en uh, this is the difference between the user and the engineer. I'm the user, I use uh, uh, Zoom but somebody invented it. And this man who invented Zoom or invented the computer, he was a scientist or he was a technical man. There's also a problem between uh, there's a science and technology also because uh, uh, science and technology, so they are closely knit to each other, uh, even from the ancient times, uh, technology. Archimedes was an example. He was a scientist and he was a great engineer. And you, if you see the um, uh, etymology of the word engineer, it comes from genius. It's rel related to genius, which was genius was uh, like a spirit which guided man. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, well, I think from starting from the 18th century, um, geniuses were called just men who had exceptional abilities. They were called geniuses. So there was no uh, this idea of a certain spirit who guides men somehow was uh, um, sort of put aside. And now we have this, we can call Einstein, for example, a genius. It doesn't mean that Einstein had some uh, friendly spirit who sort of dictated to him uh, the um, uh, equations of the special theory of relativity. We now think that Einstein invented them himself using his exceptional brain and exceptional abilities. So most people do not believe now in, in spirits, but in, uh, of course, in ancient time, 
it was quite uh, the other way around. So people attributed all their good thoughts to some influence of geniuses. Or if there are some people from Arab, um, Arab countries listening to me, these are called jinn, jinn or spirit, yes, jinn, who can serve you, huh? maybe in Arabic, yes? Yavad. Jin. Uh, yes, yeah. 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 I don't know. More or less, yes? Jin. It's like... Jin, uh, yeah. uh, like you see, uh, there are some... some uh, uh, well, of course, Jin uh, comes from Semitic language and uh, genius comes from uh, uh, Latin, but still uh, there is some affinity. Okay, so uh, this is a spirit. Okay, so engineer, uh, so and genius. So uh, uh, scientist is uh, has some. Uh, they call it in in geni ingenious. Uh, it's a, a ingenuity, ingenuity, which is uh, like. Um, uh, a, Mm, how to say, a talent to invent things, ingenuity, okay? Uh, is it correct or ingenuity? Have you seen this word or not? No. I will just, I will try to find it and I will demonstrate you. Ingenuity. Yes, ingenuity. Uh, so, mm, uh, Cambridge Dictionary. So now I will, uh, I will. Mm, I'm sorry. I will uh, demonstrate the screen. Um, ah, okay. Uh, I found it in Cambridge Dictionary of English Language. Ingenuity. So it is there. Believe me, I cannot demonstrate you my screen, but uh, the word is there, okay? Ingenuity uh, in Cambridge Dictionary, it's uh, uh, somebody's ability to think of clever new ways of doing something, okay? This is the, uh, this is the um, definition of ingenuity. So I will copy it to our uh, chat. So this I copied from uh, from Cambridge Dictionary. Someone's ability to think of clever new ways of doing something. This is called ingenuity. Maybe it's uh, not pronounced as I pronounce it yet. I will just, uh, you see? Ingenuity. No, ingenuity. Ingenuity. Okay, you hear it. Do, did you hear it? It's from... Uh, Cambridge Dictionary. Okay, so uh, here is uh, some specific features of scientific knowledge. But what is also important with science in, in contradistinction to everyday knowledge is that scientists form communities. Scientists are never alone. Scientists are part of communities and they correspond with each other and uh, befriend each other. For example, uh, Archimedes befriended, uh, I'm sorry, Archimedes, Archimedes befriended Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes, who measured, at a, it was a, a, um, a Greek geographer who, me, who, who, measured the equator, the length of the equator. Um, so they were friends and they corresponded with each other. Also Archimedes was friends with Aristarchus of Samos, uh, an ancient Caper Copernicus, Aristar Aristarchus, I think like that. Aris Archus of Samos. Uh, this he was called the ancient Copernicus because he was the first to introduce heliocentric system. 
So you see, they were all connected with each other. So scientists always form communities. Uh, it is. It started with Pythagoras, who had a, a lot of um, disciples, pupils, whom he united in a Pythagorean sort of uh, order. It was called even uh, like monastic order. Pythagorean, Pythagorean order. Pythago, uh, Pythagore. Pythagorean order or community order, you know, order like monastic order, so or knightly order, order of knights, yes, or it's uh, uh, not common in India, order like uh, you understand it, sir, uh, people who are committed to something and have even even pronounce some vows, no? How do you, maybe in India you have secret societies, societies of Kshatri who plan some reconstruction. Well, for example, Indian National Congress, it was the people who were somehow united to liberate India from the British, yeah? Yes. Uh, for example, Nehru, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, he was called Pandit Nehru, yes? Yes. No? Yes. And there was uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he was called Mahatma, he Freedom was his, not his name. Yes, Pandit and Mahatma, they're all like uh, um, uh, um, some words of, the, well, of course, so they, these are political organizations. But also scientists create their own organizations, which are not political, which are um, uh, scientific. And uh, so this is also a peculiar feature of scientific knowledge that scientists never work alone. They like, you know, this no man is an island. Yes, um, this is a dictum. No man is an island. Yes, uh, maybe, you know, it's uh, 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 yes, uh, no man is an island, all are knit together, okay? So especially for scientists, uh, this, this, is very, uh, this is true. So, and the second one is Plato's Academy. Uh, Plato, Plato's Academy, uh, Academy in Athens. Uh, uh, well, who knows about this history of academy? It was sold so-called Academos, uh, who was uh, like a local god, a local hero. Uh, and there was a sacred grove devoted to Academos. Uh, and in this grove, which was somewhere, grove, you know grove. Grove is a little forest grove. So there was a sacred grove a grove devoted to this Academus, who was like Heracles, uh, like a hero. And uh, so in this grove, uh, Plato um, sort of uh, met with his pupils. And Plato was himself a disciple of Socrates. So here started this Plato's uh, also institution, which was called Academy, and not Academy Academic, uh, is uh, just um, a very um, popular word. Now we can say that uh, that in the in the in the Middle Ages there appeared this university. What is that university? Um, university uh, is uh, of the same root as universe. Uh, universe. But in the in Latin language, these are one and the same word, universitas. Uh, so uh, this Latin word universitas means two things. It has two meanings. The first meaning is universe or the whole world, the cosmos. And the second meaning is a, a university as a um, place of learning. So you see, uh, what does it mean? 
that it means that when you come to the university, you don't come to a city. You see, it's not C, it's a S here, and it's meaningful. Uh, you don't come to the city, but you come to the universe. You are somehow open yourself to the whole universe. You have uh, get universal knowledge. So knowledge about everything, universal. So in all directions, okay? Uh, well, this is uh, the um, concept. So, uh, so another feature of scientific knowledge is that it is holistic, holistic, or it's about all things. It's not just particular knowledge. It's so that's why we study history and philosophy of science because uh, uh, we want uh, we are specialized all of us in different fields in biology, in medicine, in uh, uh, plasma physics and uh, or condensed state physics or um, quantum mechanics, but we have to uh, possess a holistic picture, the picture of the universe. It's called scientific worldview, uh, a scientific picture of the world. Scientific, mm, scientific uh, worldview. World view. This uh, maybe you heard about that scientific worldview. So you 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 have to get political events as a scientist, not as a common man, not as an ordinary person. Okay. Well, I'm not sure it's a part of the ideology, but still it's somewhere like a tacit knowledge, tacit knowledge, or um, uh, you see, it's uh, like. Uh, mm, commonly held opinion in all the universities that scientists are uh, possess scientific worldview, scientific picture of the world. So this is uh, uh, that distinguishes science scientists from everyday men or common men. Now, um, uh, some examples. Uh, <coughs> Descartes. Uh, Uh, French scientist. What are what is typical to, with Descartes? Why, why uh, he's uh, he can be um, given as an example of a true scientist? Because uh, Descartes spoke about scientific method. Method. Scientific method, which is also this method. The existence of method, it, it is what uh, distinguishes science, scientists from ordinary men. Science uses methods. So science is not just uh, um, always uh, some, uh, how to say, um, inspiration or um, improvisation. No. Uh, scientists, scientist, first of all, he uses method. Method is a sure way to truth. Not uh, because if we depend only on inspiration, then inspiration can fail us. We somehow sometimes can say, well, I have no inspiration. For example, today I have to deliver a lecture, okay, Anshita. You remember you wrote me in WhatsApp. Yes? So if I would say, no, Anshita, I have no inspiration today. I'm not disposed to, I, I, I'm, my, my genius has left me. I'm not inspired enough. So I will skip the lecture. This is not good because we have educational method also. Education should be systematic. You cannot just skip lectures. You say what you want, uh, use your experience, use your former knowledge. It's not, well, if there are some inspiration, it's okay. But if there is no inspiration, just a headache, you still proceed with a headache, okay? It's a normal, it's Indian way of life, okay? You understand? Yeah. Uh, well, this is Indian. This is, I think, uh, what we call uh, just uh, um, stoic way of life, huh? okay? Stoic, you know, stoic. 
this is when you feel not very well maybe you have a headache but you still uh, you know that it's your obligation you have to deliver a lecture so you do what you what you can uh, this is educational method but there's also scientific method when you are not inspired uh, when improvisation but just step by step you reach the certain goal yes uh, some experiments are very dull or seem to be dull okay uh, a lot of work with the microscope i don't know what uh, exactly devices do you use but still laboratory is uh, sometimes a dull place okay where you feel tired uh, you feel maybe irritated but uh, there is method and you follow method. This is uh, Descartes, thanks to him. He was, of course, a genius. He was inspired. But he says, well, we shouldn't uh, just uh, stress too much pay, or make uh, much stress upon inspiration. Better find a sure, sure method, sure way to truth. Okay? Sure, and uh, uh, he's called it. Um, uh, clear clear way to truth okay clear without any obscurity because in uh, in inspiration there is also some obscurity uh, this genius comes and he leaves and you never know when he will come again and to inspire you okay but method is always with you uh, textbook is always with you your scientific advisor is always with you okay your lecture is always with you. So, um, of course, it's maybe not so romantic, but still it is um, indispensable for, for science. Well, if we take another uh, personality, just the opposite of Descartes, it's Pascal, who was uh, uh, Pascal, um, 1623, uh, 16, 62. Uh, well, Pascal was quite the opposite figure. Uh, why the address link changes? Well, I'm, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I sent you the, 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 the link uh, to all of you. So if you didn't uh, get the information, please um, uh, just um, um, well uh, follow the group in uh, um, Vkontakte or follow the group in WhatsApp because we have a WhatsApp group also history and philosophy of science if you have WhatsApp uh, yes WhatsApp group link yes very good thank you because uh, the, the more links you have the more groups this is also scientific community, you see. Uh, not only for uh, philosophy of science, you can discuss other things in that group. Today morning, in the morning, I found out that you discussed some other topic there. So I received a lot of messages, but I'm not, uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm not irritated by that because I know that you need uh, to exchange your information that's uh, I have to suffer it yes um, uh, like stoically okay so um, there's no 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 nothing personal here I understand you are young people and you have a lot of subjects and you have to discuss some sometimes things in uh, your groups so please uh, use this whatsapp group and you will find the uh, uh, the today's link for the lecture I'm not sure if it corresponds with the link that I sent to you maybe well, uh, always uh, be um, in touch with each other. It will help you even to get close, more close friendships. And uh, uh, you see, uh, I started with that, that uh, scientists always interact with each other. Scientist uh, is not a loner, is not, is not an introvert, is not like a god Shiva, you know, Shiva, who lived in the mountain. Shiva, Kailas, yes, a, a great mountain, Shiva, you know, you don't know Shiva, Anshita, 
Shiva, a deity. Yeah, of course I do know. He, yes, he is he a... Lived, yes, he lived on the mountain. He was an introvert. He was a loner. He didn't need any people. He was, uh, he was satisfied with himself, okay? But there are all other 